OK, we're going to carry on from the last example uh, and add in a share of uh, or an issue of bonus shares on the 1st of September. So apart from that, everything else is pretty much the same. We had 10,000 brought forward uh, as of the 1st of January, giving a total issue of 10. Uh, we had a further issue of 5,000, which gives a total issue of 15,000. And let's say that the bonus issue was one share for every five in existence. Uh, so this means the bonus issue is going to be 15 divided by 5, which is 3,000. So our total issue is going to be 15 plus 3,000. Oops, plus 15,000. So that's 18,000. So far, so good. Uh, we now can input the time element. So this is how long were these issued shares in issue before there was another addition or subtraction. So the time here is January to July, so that's six months. So that's uh, six twelfths of the year. Uh, how long were these uh, full market value issues uh, shares in issue? Well, that was a further uh, all of July, all of August, all of uh, July, August, September. So that's two months of the year. Two divided by 12 is our time element there. And this is going to be the remainder of the year, all of September, October, November, December, four months. Uh, four months and of course that adds up to 12 out of 12 so that's good that's what we wanted to see uh, so now comes the interesting bit uh, see the bonus shares uh, in the case of a bonus these were issued at zero cost to the uh, subscriber uh, if it's a rights issue they were issued uh, normally to a much lower cost than the full market value and what that's going to do if we just completed the weighting average as as it is that's going to throw out comparability of our earnings per share with previous years because we've given these uh, at a lower cost we've had lower funds coming into the company and therefore lower resources fewer resources with which to earn earnings so we need to make some kind of adjustment to make sure the EPS remains comparable and the way we do that is by um, weighting up the previous amount, the previous shares before the bonus issue uh, with a fraction just to boost them up. And the fraction is the amount in issue post, uh, post bonus or post uh, rights with the amount in issue pre-bonus or pre-rights. So let's how, have a look at how that would work. Uh, after issue, there were 18,000 in total. And pre-issue, there were 15,000 in total. So these two uh, share amounts are going to be multiplied by this issue, by this bonus fraction, it's called, of post, which is 18, and then pre was 15. I can miss off the thousands as it's just a straight ratio. 18 over 15. Uh, is our bonus fraction for the brought forward shares, 10,000. And it's going to be the same uh, for the full market value shares issued in July. Uh, so when we come to do our weighted average, we're going to multiply this fraction in as well, which, of course, as it's over 1, is going to slightly increase the weighting of these two share issues. So let's do that now. Uh, we have the total share issue times by the time in issue, so that's 6 over 12. And now we're multiplying by 18 over 15 uh, to give our total, uh, our total weighted average for this period. We'll do the same here. Uh, total issue is 15,000, and we're then multiplying by 2 over 12 
2 divided by 12 times 18 over 15 and that comes to 3000 and then this is just the bonus issue on its own 18,000 shares oops in issue for four out of the 12 months and there's no bonus fraction here these are just in as they are so if we add all those up uh, just bring that down uh, that's 15,000 weighted average over the year uh, we'll see the total issue is 18,000 but the weighted average including these two bonus fraction boosts for the earlier part of the year makes the um, EPS oh, sorry the total shares in issue weighted average 15,000 uh, so that's already been brought into this figure here 15,000 the actual profit after tax minus the irredeemable preference share figure that's not changed profit after tax is here 12,000 irredeemable preference shares is paid out of that profit so it has to be removed from that profit after tax figure uh, which will give us a EPS value of divide that by now 15,000 gives an EPS of 73 pence or cents if we're working in dollars uh, so you can see here that uh, it's slightly more complex when we have a bonus or rights issue uh, and if it was rights the, the process would be the same we look at all the uh, issues before the bonus or rights issue and we boost them uh, uh, with this bonus fraction And when it comes to calculating the totals, uh, we just multiply the total issue times 6 over 12 times 18 over 15 gives your 6,000. Uh, this is 15,000 total issue for 2 out of the 12 months times 18 over 15 is 3,000. And then the bonus or the rights issue doesn't have a bonus fraction it's just as at the cost that it is 18,000 uh, times 4 over 12 gives 6,000 add those up and you get your 15,000 as your weighted average shares in every issue and uh, let me just adjust that so that's the weighted average shares in issue weighted average shares in issue uh, for the entity okay so that is uh, the EPS with a bonus or rights issue